What is going on, you lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? It is raining outside, so you know what time it is. It's time to put some thoughts into the microphone, blurt them out, and see how many people disagree with me. So to give you some backstory on how this occurred, I mean, obviously you can tell from the title what I'm going to wind up talking about, but it is a combination of both. I mean, I'm sure all of you know about Valorant at this point. Uh, it's popping off pretty hard. Let me actually go check. I'm sure the attention has died down at least a very small amount, but I still want to see how many people... That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, how many people are currently watching it? 1.1 million people currently watching Valorant. Uh, it was the highest that I saw it. It probably got higher than this at some point because I wasn't checking consistently. But the highest that I personally saw it was 1.7 million, which I, that's just a lot of people. Now, to be fair, a lot of people are only watching it because, well, I, I'm not going to get into this. It doesn't matter. This isn't the point. Valorant's not a fighting game. You don't care about it. I don't care about it. But point is, Riot Games has a shit ton of attention on it at the moment. They are expanding their gaming division. They're getting into all sorts of things. They released, the first thing they did was the auto chess thing with... Team Fight Tactics, is that what it's called? And then they released a card game called Legends of Rune Terra, right? Both of those are, are still based around League of Legends, which is obviously their big game. But Valorant is the first game they've come out with that just has nothing to do with any of their established worlds, nothing to do with League. It's its own thing. Uh, it, kind of its own thing. I mean, it's quite literally the love child of Counter-Strike and overwatch and like nobody can deny that there's really no originality to it it's based it's just literally those two games smashed together <laughs> but point being there's a lot of attention on riot games now and so because of all of that attention some of that is inevitably going to bleed over to their fighting game whenever that releases they have like five or six other games in the pipeline that there's you know they're just waiting to release so who knows how far out their fighting game is from release but legitimately, I think the stage is perfectly set for them to swoop in and just take over the FGC. Because, I mean, number one, just from a logistical standpoint, they have the esports backing that no other fighting game company does. Like Capcom, Namco Bandai with Tekken, and with Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, uh, who else is doing Like NRS with Mortal Kombat, and I think Injustice has its own thing. Anyway, point being... They all kind of had to figure things out as time went along. None of them really have an established formula for running their own personal esports circuit. And their own personal esports circuit is literally just, hey, you guys that are already running an established tournament, we're going to piggyback off of you and we're just going to like throw points at people for attending your event and for placing at your event. And eventually it's just going to culminate in one single event that we run. They don't have, you know, something like the LCS, the LEC, the LPL, you know, like whatever. All of the various league tournament series that exist that eventually culminates in the world's tournament. They don't have any of that. They also don't have anywhere near the resources that Riot Games has to be able to throw at a potential esports circuit. And so just from that point, you're looking at that and Riot can so easily just come in and be like, yo, we have our own arenas that we can run events at. We have our own established, you know, like commentary teams and whatnot that we can, you know, bleed over into it. We have our own studio that has designed that is designing this game that can handle like, you know, public relations and all that stuff and they can discuss with the company. So for those of you that don't know, there was a game that came out a long time ago. I can't remember the name of the studio that made it, but the game was called Rising Thunder. And it received a lot of attention for being a fairly fluid, easy-to-pick-up fighting game, but also because of how good the online was. It used rollback. I think it used GGPO, but don't quote me on that. But it used rollback, and they implemented it excellently. And that team got bought by Riot Games to then, obviously, develop the fighting game that they're currently working on. So, when they have an established group of people whose background is in fighting games, who already created a pretty damn good online netcode, 
when everybody and their mother is sitting here complaining about online at the same time right now because none of the fighting games that are currently out really have good online. I shouldn't say none of the fighting games. None of the most popular fighting games out right now really have good online. If one comes out that's fun to play, that has the backing of Riot Games and all of their resources, and it has good online play, dude, every other fighting game is screwed. Just straight up. People will just flock to that instantly. Like, oh shit, we have a fighting game that we can actually play now without the added frustration of latency on our hands. Like, let's get into this right now. And then you have to get into the other components that are currently going on. There is not a single fighting game out right now that is not currently, that's currently, like, pleasing their fan base. Right? Like, the closest one, I think the one that currently has the best kind of, like, public perception at the moment is Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Right? But the problem is the PC version's being quite literally just left out, just locked out the party. They don't get to have the fun that the PS4 version gets. They're like a week plus behind on patches, on DLC characters, and people are rightfully pissed at XC Games for how they're handling this. That's not even getting into the DLC. I've seen plenty of complaints about the DLC, which I feel like the writing's kind of on the walls for this particular game. Like, it's based off of a mobile game, the most predatory games on the market when it comes to trying to take your money. Like, of course this kind of thing's gonna happen feels bad that it did but it's kind of inevitable again when you're looking at a game based off of a mobile game that being said so you already have that going on with grand blue fantasy versus right plus the online's terrible I've, i haven't really seen much good many good thoughts about the online it uses rollback netcode it's fairly bad yada yada i'm sorry did i say rollback it uses delay based netcode and it's fairly bad and people are starting to get fed up with that and also the additional component of no crossplay. Which, I mean, there's already an additional error in there when you have the PC version and the PS4 version on completely different versions of the game. You can't have cross-play in the first place. That just won't work. You need to be updating them at the same damn time. And the fact that they're not means... I mean, they're just... They're screwing up. The game is fun. People are having fun with the game. They have a lot of attention on themselves right now. They could have made something big and beautiful out of this game. But... As per usual, with every fighting game company out there, they screwed up enough parts to piss off enough people that they're going to lose attention, they're going to lose sales, they're going to lose... I mean, they're just going to lose playing time that people would have otherwise poured into the game because of things that are just completely... just because of business decisions that are completely unnecessary and are just harmful to their product. Tekken 7. I mean, let's not even get into Michael Murray, who's got all kinds of drama surrounding him at the moment. He seems to be incapable of opening his mouth and not pissing people off at the moment. But even just the balance right now, people are pissed at Season 3. Now, to be fair, Tekken's in a pretty solid spot regardless. I think it's the one game that's going to be perfectly fine no matter what happens, because there's no other 3D game on the market that can challenge it. That's the big problem with Tekken 7 at the moment and with fans of Tekken 7. They have no alternative. There are so many alternatives for 2D fighters that you can get into for, you know, just about, for whatever you want. If you like Street Fighter, there are plenty of Street Fighter-esque close enough games to that that you can hop into that instead of Street Fighter if you would like. If you're into one of the anime games, there are multitudes of games that you can get into instead of that. But if you are into, you know, like the squad-based game, like Dragon Ball Fighters, there are plenty of alternatives to that. But you look at Tekken 7, there's nothing comparable. Like, Tekken 7, Dead or Alive, Soul Calibur. Those are pretty much the only real 3D fighters on the market. And none of them play even close to each other. So if you like Tekken, Soul Calibur is really not going to just automatically be for you. Same thing with Dead or Alive. Like, they're all such different games that Tekken is pretty much... Like, despite how many missteps they've had, it is still currently the most played fighting game on Steam, I assume it's going to be one of the most played fighting games on console as well, but I don't have any data for that. But suffice to say, like, Tekken 7 public perception, not hot right now. Street Fighter V has never had particularly strong public perception, and I feel like the second, an altern- a, like, a decently sized alternative, I mean, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus has kind of already taken a bit of its slot, for sure. Um, 
but I feel it's really particularly loyal to that game. I shouldn't say nobody. There's people that enjoy it. But very few people are just, like, truly loyal to that game. It's just they don't feel like they have an alternative to the game that's popular enough that allows them to play the matches they want to play. Uh, but when it comes to the anime games, like, that's... Anyway, I'm getting kind of off point. My point being, can you think of a single fighting game that's currently out right now that does not have drama surrounding it that harms the game? Guilty Gear has all kinds of problems surrounding it with the development of it. With I mean, obviously, it hit some good public points recently, but we still don't really know how the game's going to shape up from a gameplay perspective, and that's ultimately going to be the final decider for whether or not people are going to buy it, people are going to hop on it, and people are going to support it. And I think for a lot of people, it's going to require some pretty significant changes to the formula for that to happen. Um, we don't even know where Blaze Blue's at. Like, I think Cross Tag Battle still has another season. Like, they announced that there would be more DLC characters, but that's it for Blaze Blue. There's nothing else. Uniclear, apparently 1.03 pissed people off. That's why I actually meant to leave with this, I forgot. Uh, 1.03 pissed people off. I tried to hop on and play Uniclear recently, and nobody was online, and I was so shocked because it, it was riding a very, very nice train of popularity thanks to its run up until EVO, thanks to its run at EVO, people were really hyped for the game. And then I hop on, and I see nobody playing, and I'm like, huh, wonder why this is. So I started to delve into it a little bit, and I saw that a lot of people are just like, man, fuck 1.03. Like, how dare they do this to us? So people aren't even happy with Uniclear, which prior to 1.03, people were very happy, and people were playing it. So, that's worrisome to me, personally, because Uniclear was going to be my game. That was the game that I was going to grind out and play non-stop, and now, it's got me wondering if I might want to invest in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, despite the fact that it's not my type of game at all. But maybe I want to play it now, because it has a community. But So, anyway, all of that said, it's just like, if Riot Games, within the next, I feel like, three or four months can show some really solid, like, gameplay of the fighting game, can show it off, can start maybe listing the characters that are going to be involved, show more of the systems, show how it's going to be played, maybe even have a closed beta like they're having with Valorant right now, after Valorant is kind of settled, after it's, I'm, I don't know when it's actually going to be legitimately released, but I assume fairly soon if they're confident enough to showcase it to the world like this and have the closed beta, um... But so, like, once the release of that settles down, then they move on to their next project. And if it's a fighting game, with how everybody's mentality currently is around all the current fighting games, dude, they're going to take over and they're going to run amok. And honestly, all I can really say is that that's a net positive for fighting games in general. Because that's one thing that I feel has led to the current scenario that we're in is that nothing has really challenged a status quo. Like, everybody's kind of carved out their own niches, right? Street Fighter is Street Fighter. It has its own fan base that's kind of separate from everything else, and it's going to be just fine. Same thing with Tekken, same thing with NRS games, same thing with the anime games. Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, I think, well, actually, I should say Dragon Ball Fighters was one of the first ones that had legitimate crossover potential of communities to kind of rip people away from stuff but unfortunately that game i shouldn't say unfortunately i was not a fan of it so it's kind of fortunate didn't last that long from a competitive standpoint for like all of the different people from all the different communities staying in it kind of carved out its own population of people a lot of them from Skullgirls, ironically enough that kind of just stuck with that and everybody else just treated it as a side game more or less um and then Grand Blue Fantasy Versus came out, and it's kind of got the same deal going on. But again, as mentioned at the be like earlier, a lot of the business decisions are really harming it, and are probably going to drive people away if something else comes along that offers a better alternative that's just as fun to play. So, Riot Games can threaten a status quo, force these people to step up, and kind of realize like, oh. People aren't really loyal to our games because they're good games. I shouldn't say because they're good games, because they're great games, right? Great games are the ones that inspire loyalty. 
and inspire a community rallying around them and sticking to them and playing them for God knows how long. We don't currently have that in a fighting game. Tekken 7 was the closest thing I feel we had to it, but now, as mentioned, Season 3 is pissing a lot of people off. And they're kind of ruining all that goodwill they built up along the way. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Because I, I really do hope that Riot Games does something with their fighting game. Does something big really soon. They pop off and all the other companies have to scramble to make up for it. To realize like, oh, we need to step our game up. We need to make something way better. I'm surprised Capcom hasn't realized it yet themselves. Because like, their fighting game... I mean, I guess recently they did kind of muck it up with Resident Evil 3. I heard uh, people aren't too happy about that remake. But aside from that, like, they've killed it in every fashion. Monster Hunter, killing it. Resident Evil 7 was the shit. And then they did the Resident Evil 2 remake, which was also super popular. Um, what else am I thinking of? There was one other one in the tip of my on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember it. One of their other big franchises, but I'm just completely blanking because I'm an idiot. But still, like, they killed it for everything except their fighting game division. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, as we know, flopped like hell. Massive failure. Um, Street Fighter V has been pretty divisive ever since it released. It's still maintaining a pretty decent following, but nobody's going to say that it's not a game without its faults. Anyway, I, I've been rambling on now for like 10 minutes. I should have just ended this 10 minutes ago with that point, but still. Ooh. I just saw Grand Blue Fantasy Versus only has 354 people watching it. That's kind of surprising. I would have thought that it would have more people pl uh, more people watching. Given its popularity currently. But I guess not. That is kind of surprising, to be honest. I, I really legitimately would have thought more people would be watching. To be fair, it might also be just a select group of people. Because I've watched Mike Ross playing it recently, and he usually pulls around like somewhere between 600 to 800 viewers at any given time. And so like he's not streaming, right? And then you'll have people that poll you know, a couple thousand of viewers that will add that, that will add to that tally. But yeah. It's kind of surprising that it's so low when there isn't a like Street Fighter Five has more people watching it right now. Dragon Ball Fighters has a decent, I mean, one point three k, not exactly amazing. Tekken Seven only has seven hundred and ninety five. Really, I guess that actually makes sense. I very rarely see Tekken Seven pull big numbers unless Eris is streaming it. I think Lil Majin pulls pretty decent numbers as well. Anyway, I guess I'm just I'm rambling and I need to, I need to stop. But I am kind of sad that Tekken 7, like, people are so pissed off at Tekken 7 right now. It's both sad and okay with it at the same time. Because I really wanted to try out Fakuram. Because Muay Thai is my jam. I love anything to do with Muay Thai. But <laughs> I don't really want to support them force, like, pay DLC for frame data, that kind of stuff. Like, no. I'm not giving you guys more money. Not until you learn your lesson. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. I'm done. Thank you for listening. I just I want to see it happen. I want to see Riot Games come out, throw a haymaker that drops people to the floor. They get counted out. I guess you don't get counted out in MMA, which is what would be the proper kind of thing. You get counted out in boxing, though. Do you get counted out in Muay Thai? I don't actually know how Muay Thai tournament rules work. I wish there was more... I wish there was actual competition for Muay Thai outside of Thailand or like regions around it. I'm sure there's more in regions outside, like just kind of around that area. But damn, I love me some Muay Thai. But I don't know shit about the rules. Still, it would be really nice for all of the fighting game companies to get a fire lit under their asses and to shape up because... I'm really sick of the mentality that the developers currently seem to have of people that play fighting games are stupid and they want simple, easy to play fighting games. And the, so we're just going to remove most of the depth. It's getting really, really old really quickly. It's fine if you want to do that. 
but don't do it with IPs that are beloved for the complexity that exists inside of them. So yeah, I'm hoping Riot Games again. They just kill it. We'll see what happens. Thank you for listening. I'm out. Peace.